Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unboxing and Stuff. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Bellphone BF-TD511 UHF DMR Handy Talkie. So we're going to go through the radio, show you some of its specs and features, uh, go through the menu system to show you that stuff. We're going to then go through and uh, do an overview of the radio programming software, do some field testing, power testing, uh, and then at the end we'll compile it all and talk about uh, what we think about this radio here at Unboxing and Stuff channel. So stick around if you guys want to know more about this radio and let's go ahead and get her in, into the unboxing. Okay and once again I have de-plasticized everything in the box to make for a smoother and quicker unboxing. So first here we have our battery which is a 2000 milliamp hour battery pack. We have the BF-TD511 DMR radio itself, and once again, this is in a UHF 400 to 480 megahertz frequency range. We have our cradle charger, our AC charging cord, and just like the last radio, this happens to be a European style plug, so I just purchased an adapter, uh, however, if you're looking to import these radios uh, you can get them to provide whichever AC plug is correct for your country. We have a UHF antenna. We have a hand strap and finally we have our belt clip. So we're just go ahead and put this thing together and while I'm putting it together, we can talk about some of the other uh, accessories that don't come with this kit, but you can get as well. Uh, they do have a whip antenna. They do also have a super charger, which is basically a multi-gang charger. You can charge several of these radios at one time. And then they also have an earpiece in case you're in a crowded loud environment and they also have a speaker microphone that you can get as well and then same thing with the last radio just get this lightly snug on the left side then you come in and snug it down on the right side completely and then come back to the left side and give it one nice little tighten and there you go and today I did it with the battery off, which actually makes it easier, but I forgot about that yesterday. So then the battery just goes in with the tabs on the front, and then you just push it in, and it just snaps right into place. The antenna goes right on top of the radio there. And then I personally don't like to use hand straps, but they do have the hand straps as well, if that's something you're interested in. So let's go ahead and discuss some of the specs and capabilities of this radio. This radio is available in several frequency ranges. There's a VHF version, which is 136 to 174 megahertz. There is also a UHF version with 350 to 390 megahertz version. There is the UHF 400 to 480 megahertz, which is what we have here today. And then finally, there's a UHF that is 450 to 520 megahertz. This radio is capable of having up to 32 zones with up to 16 channels in each zone for a total of 512 channels. This radio is narrow and wideband channel spacing capable. The power output is 5 watts on high power and 1 watt on low power. This is a DMR tier 2 radio and it is also capable of FM analog modulation. It has an IP67 weatherproof rating. It is ARC4 and AES256 encryption capable. It has a built-in GPS. It has a man down feature which triggers an alarm when the radio tilts beyond a certain degree or is not moving at all, and that is set in software. It has a lone worker mode which requires a response from the user at set intervals and triggers an alarm if the response is not received. And it also has emergency alert functions uh, in analog and digital modes. This radio is capable of DMO pseudo trunking, allowing for the use of both time slots on a single DMR frequency. Digital 
slash analog dual modes receive both analog and digital signals on a single channel and can automatically switch into the needed mode for efficient communications. This radio can automatically roam between multiple sites in a DMR system. And these radios also have a voice recording function, uh, which is pretty cool, and I'll show you that a little later on. Okay, so next we're gonna go ahead and go over our buttons and knobs on this radio. So here, first we have our power and volume knob. So just click that on there. And you can change the volume there. Next over, we have our channel selector knob. This is a 16 position switch. So each zone has a maximum capability of 16 channels. We have our LED indicator up here on the top. We have our speaker up here on top. Over on the left, we have our push to talk PTT button. And then we have uh, side button one and side button two. We also have an orange emergency button up top here, which I forgot to mention there. Uh, we obviously have our screen, and we'll go ahead and peel off to reveal a very nice bright screen. Then we have our front keys here, which these keys, unlike the last radio we looked at, are not programmable keys. Um, so that's one thing that I do not like about this radio as much as the one we reviewed just before this. Um, but these feet keys you'll use for getting into menus. So that one gets you into the menu. Okay, a back key, up and down keys. And then that I guess takes you back to the home. So let's try that go. Yeah, it just takes you back to like a home key. And then of course you have your regular number keys down here below. And then uh, down at the very bottom here is where we have our microphone input. Over on the side, we have a side cover, just like the last radio we looked at. And you just unscrew this guy here. And pop that out. And then there you can see we have our programming or speaker mic uh, pins in here and you can see you got a little weatherproof seal on the door here to protect against the moisture Okay So much like the previous radio um, You're gonna have different menus in different zones. So here we are we're in in my analog zone that I've created So we have our scanning same thing, no scan group. We have our zone selection button. And just like the last radio, I have it set up digital analog and a digital slash analog. We have our setting where we come in and actually settings right here. Talk around, tone alert, transmit power, backlight, LED education, box, language, squelch, GPS, VR, RTC, U disk theme. Okay, so that's all general radio settings. We have our system info, battery status, uh, number, firmware version, CP version, hardware, serial number, voice record version, GPS data, RSSI indicate. So it shows you a receive level. That's a pretty cool little feature. Uh, and then we have our channel configure. So can come in and change receive frequency, transmit frequency, channel name, timeout timer, set your PL. So real quick, we'll just go in here and just like the last radio, the star key is the backspace. Then you can use the regular number pad below to enter. And then once you have whatever you want in there, you just click OK and then it saves successfully. So you can do that for each individual setting here. So we go back on the channel name we can delete out our H and then we want to put an H in there again. There it is. And just click OK. And now we've saved that successfully. So you can just go through and 
set up a complete channel with that uh, relatively easily. And then finally, voice records is a pretty cool feature. Uh, this radio will actually record the receive audio. So uh, once we go through and do some of our testing, I will show you uh, the audio that was recorded on here uh, and also show you or let you listen to it over the camera so you can kind of see uh, how similar that sounds. But uh, I thought that was a really neat feature that I've not seen in, in uh, any of the other radios that I personally own. So we're going to go in here and change our zone. We'll go to the digital zone and we'll go into the menu here. And as you can see, it's much like the menu in the other radio that we were working on. Or I'm sorry, looking at. Uh, so we got contacts, scanning, zone, SMS, call log, settings, voice records. So go into contacts, you have your list, manual dial, add a new contact, scanning, same thing, I haven't set up any scan groups. Zone, swap your zones. SMS, you can send the messages. Your call log shows you missed calls answered, outgoing, and you can also clear the record if you want. Your settings, same settings as the other one where we have our general radio settings, our actual system info, and then we go down here to channel configure and you're able to change your receive frequency, transmit frequency, channel name, timeout timer, transmit contact, CC index, <clears throat> your slot, receive group list. Then same thing down here in the bottom, we also have the voice records so we can come in and listen to uh, the actual recordings, which I thought is pretty neat. Um, finally, we have our digital analog zone. And much like the other zone, the digital is going to have all those same features. And then if we come in here to channel configure, you'll also notice that we have stuff like CTCSS and transmit contact. So we have a mixture of our analog and digital settings. One other feature this radio has that the other one does not is a, a little built-in flashlight. So just a little light for a situation if you needed it. But I think that about wraps up our uh, menus and our basic buttons here and options on the front. Uh, and I'll mention uh, again, there are only three buttons that are programmable on this button is the orange button, the side button one and two, uh, giving you a total of six uh, additional features that you can set for the radio to do just through pressing these buttons uh, for short or long press durations. So I think that about wraps this up. I'm going to go ahead and get set up on our watt meter and we'll do some power testing and then we'll move on from there. Okay, so here we are set up on the watt meter and once again, disclaimer, uh, this is all stuff I've purchased off of Amazon, you know, Amazon 100 watt dummy load, Amazon cables, Amazon adapters, and Amazon power meter. None of this stuff is super high lab quality, so I cannot speak to the accuracy, uh, exact accuracy. This is just to give us a general idea of where everything lies. And keep in mind, this watt meter is rated up to 200 watts, so I don't know how accurate it is on the lower end of the scale. That being said, let's go ahead and test the radio and see where things lie. So I'm going to start on analog, channel 1. So middle of the band, 446. And we're going to go ahead and key it up on high power. And so we're seeing approximately 3 watts on that. And we're going to go same frequency on low power. Showing approximately a quarter watt. And I went ahead and programmed in the bottom of the band and 
once again pointing out going into a watt meter uh, this is just for reference to see how it does across the band so high power on 400 3.9 watts approximately and then we'll change it to low power half a watt approximately and then finally the upper end of the band on high power 2.3 watts and low power 0.3 watts okay so there are your power settings and uh, across the band you can see on the lower end of the band uh, it's pretty much pretty close to the spec uh, and then on the upper end it's below the spec uh, somewhat significantly and then I'll just fall back on the I don't know how accurate this machine is but that's the data we have so let's go ahead and move on and we're going to take a look at PC programming and then we will get out into the field and do some field testing. Okay, here we are looking at the software for the BFTD 511. And as you can see here, I got my information. We got the frequency range, serial number, firmware, and then optional functions, which you can't click on or off. Those are just things that are built into the radio. Let's take a look at our general settings, name, delays, talk around general stuff then we go down to tone alerts which I have disabled currently at the moment we also have password if you want to power on password um, which is kind of cool depending on uh, the use case for your radio if you don't want a kid to get into it and be able to transmit on something then that's not a bad idea you have the record enable and you can do uncompressed or 3.5 I really like this record feature. I've been pretty uh, happy with uh, what I've seen so far of it. So I I think it's just a really neat thing to be able to do. <clears throat> we have our time zone, which you can set here. Uh, synchronized to PC is what I did, so that makes it easy. So then we have our button settings. Like I said, we have the three buttons that uh, you can mess with and change to different settings. So you still get the nice... A list of options that you can make them <clears throat> but you got a short press and long press for each of those so you got your six options there so a little less than the other one but still nice to have some functionality you get one touch calls you can set up here a short message you can set up those text messages here predetermined you know hey how's it going or are you okay whatever stuff you might send a lot depending on type of work then we go here to encrypt config, once again disabled because I'm operating it as a ham operator on uh, licensed ham frequencies, so you're not allowed to encrypt your traffic. And you can see it just has basic uh, encryption, the advanced ARC4 encryption, and the AES encryption. One thing that I noticed is different in this radio compared to the other is the other one... Uh, blanks out the uh, data so that if somebody else read the radio they wouldn't be able to see your keys this one however uh, does not so if somebody reads it you know they can see whatever key is is currently in there uh, in the radio so that's just something to keep in mind uh, maybe you'd want more security on a radio like this if you were going to try and use the encryption uh, for that reason uh, just something to keep in mind so we'll go here to our menu settings so you get all stuff based on address list, uh, your scan, call logs, utilities, intercom config. So these are all the menus you can uh, mess with to allow people to access and change things or not. And once again, I turned off the intro screen so that you get a little faster boot up uh, on this radio as well. Here we go here, GPS settings, disable, battery save, and performance mode. And then just a few other options there, like how often it's going to do stuff with the GPS. <coughs> Signaling. Uh, we have also our work alone and man down alarm in the same page here. So we can able, enable it. You have your 
required response times. They have to re respond within this time. And then uh, a warning how often it's going to warn them every 10 seconds when they're getting to that point. <clears throat> and then you can select how they respond, voice mission or a key. Man down is another thing too here. Uh, you can select for if the radio t tilts over, if there's no motion, we'll set it off or both. So and then you can set the actual degrees at which that takes effect. So then we're going to go down here to our analog or red alert. So I can see that's disabled, but you can have the different types of alarms going off if you send out an alert. And then same thing, our digital red alert here, <coughs> regular silent or silent with voice. So here we go to our address list for digital. And then you can see I set up a group call uh, simplex uh, on 99 for just our basic testing. We have our receive group list, receive group one. We just have the single simplex channel in that group. And then we go down to our channels. And you can see here, if you click on the actual channels button, you have your zones. And to add more zones, you just click right, right click and then click add. So now you can see we have a zone four in there. And then you can also delete them the same way. Um, and then you can also actually copy another zone. So let's say I wanted to just edit some of the information in here. I could take the analog, copy it, right click on the channel and paste. And then there we go, I have an analog one with all the channels already in there as well. So if you need to make some minor changes, that's another way you could do that, uh, which I like. <coughs> and then you can click also just on a specific zone and it'll show you what the each of the 16 channels in that zone are and how many of them are actually populated. So if we go here to our uh, digital channel, you can see you get the option to select different uh, channel types up top, scan and roam list, which I do not have set up, your color code, you make it receive only, you can choose your slot, one, two, or pseudo trunk, uh, your voice priority, and your encryption stuff there, and then you just punch in your receive frequency, and then you could do the offset for repeaters, which I uh, am a big fan of that. So. On this one, if you wanted it at 5 megahertz offset, you just type in 5, and then you click Mapping, and then you can see it changed it to 451. So there you go. So that's that's kind of nice. It can speed things up. Then you su choose your Receive group, and you got your some of your emergency options here as well. And then you got your default address, Simplex, Emergency System, None at the moment, power level, high, timeout timer, how long until you can rekey after timeout timer, and your admit criteria. So that's a digital channel. Here's an analog, and as you can see, it's a lot less stuff going on. <coughs> you got your analog channel, and then you have your signal type, uh, which we'll get to those here pretty soon, but uh, I have it as none, but you can also do two-tone, five-tone, and DTMF. And your bandwidth, I have it at wide. And then here we have our receive frequency with no PL and our transmit frequency with a PL on there. And then you can also do a high power or low power. Got your timeout timer and then a delay between rekeying and busy channel lockout as well is an option. And then you have the digital to analog. So you have digital compatible analog, and then you have analog compatible digital. And it's basically just a combination of both analog and digital settings in a single uh, channel. So you can interact with both a digital and an analog uh, user without having to switch channels, which is a pretty neat feature. And we jump down here to scan. It shows your hang time is four seconds. Get your scan group, which I have not built a scan group at all. 
Then you have uh, roading, roaming groups for roaming, so you can active site search. <clears throat> so you can be looking for si site signals coming in at a certain threshold to see if you're close enough to use them. Then we have our two-tone service. So we have two-tone systems, which this two-tone and five-tone, um, at least from my experience, I would say that this stuff is uh, mostly used in like fire, uh, public safety type stuff. You know, that's where I see the, the tones to be able to tone people out and call them to an, an incident or something along those lines. Uh, and then you get your contacts. <clears throat> and then a quick call style list. So that's pretty cool. And then you have your five tone. It's going to be somewhat similar. And definitely a lot of options. I'm not too familiar with five tone specifically. I haven't spent much time learning about this particular feature. But there's definitely a lot of things you can do. This definitely opens up some possibilities. And then, so that wraps up 5 tone. There's definitely a lot of stuff in there. And then we have DTMF's service. It looks like you have most of the same folders and files to select from uh, as you do with the five tone. It's a very similar setup there. So that's these are definitely interesting features to have in the handy talkie, uh, and I think that's pretty cool. Like I said, fire would definitely be, or emergency fire and emergency services kind of stuff uh, seems to fit that pretty well. But that is a general overview of the software for the 511. So at this point, what we're going to do is go ahead and move on to a field test. And then after that, uh, we'll come back together and talk a little bit about uh, you know, what I liked, what I didn't, and just kind of wrap the whole thing up and uh, see where we're at. Okay, here we are. Got the garage open, and we're going to be doing some testing. I have a friend out in the field. And he's approximately three and a quarter miles away. So we're going to go ahead and uh, just do some radio checks back and forth on analog and digital. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and edit out our call signs for privacy reasons. Uh, but just note that they are being used. You're just not going to see it in the video. So let's go ahead and get started. Audio test, three and a quarter miles on the TD-511. Testing one, two, three, three, two, one. Audio test, three and a quarter miles on the T-511, testing one, two, three, three, two, one. I copy you. You've got slight static in there, fully understandable, good signal. Testing one, two, three, three, two, one. I copy you. You've got slight static in there, fully understandable, good signal. Testing one, two, three. Three, two, one. I copy you same. Definitely some static and a little bit of noise, but audio is clear. Sounds good. And let's go ahead and cut over to digital. Audio test, three and a quarter miles on the TD-511. Testing one, two, three, three, two, one. I copy you. You've got slight static in there. Fully understandable. Good signal. Testing one, two, three, three, two, one. Testing DMR digital. Test one, two, three, three, two, one. How do you copy? Testing DMR digital. Test one, two, three, three, two, one. How do you copy? I copy your transmission, your full quieting, sound great, good audio, testing one, two, three, three, two, one. 
I copy your transmission. You're full quieting. Sound great. Good audio. Testing. One, two, three, three, two, one. I right, copy you as well. Sound really good. Just a touch of, I don't know if it'd quite be noise, but just a little bit of a, a, a variation in the audio, but it sounds still really good. I can hear your audio loud and clear. So let's go ahead and move on. Testing DMR digital. Test one, two, three, three, two, one. How do you copy? I copy your transmission. You're full quieting. Sound great. Good audio. Testing one, two, three, three, two, one. Okay, here we are back from our range test on the TD511. And as you can see in the three and a quarter test, it did fine. The audio was okay. Um, There's a lot of obstructions, some two story houses and trees and uh, a town in between us and where we were talking to. So uh, overall, uh, I think it performed quite well. Uh, just like the TD-930, we did a range test with me up on a hill and with clear line of sight all the way to uh, where my buddy was. And we were able to get 34 and a half miles of communication out of this little radio on that low power and the 450 band and it's just pretty incredible i was i was very surprised the audio quality sounded really nice it actually sounded better than the three and a quarter uh, but keep in mind there was no obstructions in the way we were clear line of sight and so it just kind of gives you a little idea what these things can do when not inhibited by those obstructions okay so like the td930 we're going to close this video out with this radio in a cup of water. It is IP67 rated according to the manufacturer. So we will be dunking it in and we have 30 minutes approximately to pull it out before hypothetically we start having any breaches or problems. So we are going to go ahead and put this thing in here. And I overfilled it on accident. So I'll go ahead and do a little clean up here. All right, well, you know there's water in this one because it's overfilled and it's spilled all over. So I'll just wipe this off here. Okay, now you have a clear view of the front of the radio. I have the screen set to stay on. We'll see if it'll hold out for the full 30 minute time period or at least as long as I'm talking about it. Not another 30 minutes, don't worry. Uh, just to see if it can perform as it's supposed to. So, the TD-511, BFTD-511, what do I think about it? Uh, overall, it's a pretty nice form factor. Uh, all the buttons feel really good. The uh, one drawback to compared to the last radio we looked at is there's only three buttons which are programmable and you can do up to six functions on those three buttons because you have long and short press. Uh, but that's a personal preference. That's something that I, I like the functionality of multiple buttons that can do uh, specific tasks, but they work. I mean, everything still works on this radio just fine. It's easy to navigate. It's easy to do the uh, front panel programming. Um, the software on this radio is fairly good it's slightly less refined than the last software we looked at, but it's still totally functional. And uh, one thing that I will point out about this radio is it has some really neat features that even the other radio didn't have. Uh, one of my favorite features on this particular radio is the ability to record the audio. I just thought that was so cool and uh, it works just fine. I mean, what you hear out the speaker is what you're going to hear out of the recorded audio. And I just thought that was a really neat feature uh, specific to this radio. Um, personal preference, once again, uh, something I'd like to be able to change. Uh, this radio is capable of the 32 zones with 16 channels max per zone. I would like the option to flip flop that as well and have the top knob be 16 zones with up to 32 channels um, each. I don't know if that's something that's uh, 
just software driven or if that's just a, a much bigger deal than that. But it would be cool to see the ability to swap back and forth depending on your needs. You could have one or the other. But as of now, it's just 16 channels per zone. So keep that in mind. The overall fit and finish on this radio is solid. It feels good. It's uh, once again, not quite as nice as a high-end, you know, Motorola APX radio or something like that. But it's much nicer than your low-end, you know, bow fangs and stuff like that. It feels like it's going to last. It feels like it's of good quality. Um, the screen is easy to read and functions pretty well inside and outside. I think direct daylight on any screens like this is a challenge, but it still is totally usable. Provide a little shade at your hand, just tilt the radio just a little bit and just get it set for where your eyes can read it well and no problems. Um, other than that, I, th I think my real only other thing that I would like to see change, uh, just like the other radio we had talked about, is I'd love to see a dual band version available. Um, however, if you are specifically using to, looking to use this type of radio for a business and you only use a single band or whatever, or an agency, and you only have one band, then that's totally acceptable. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, as a, a ham operator, I'd like the ability to be able to have more than one band inside of a single radio. So that's just personal preference, but as a single band radio, it works quite well. Uh, it's functional and it's pretty neat. And at a pretty reasonable price point for what you get here, there's a lot of uh, features within this package that I think uh, maybe set it apart from a lot of the competition that's out there. So I think that about wraps up my opinions and reviews for this radio. I think it's cool. And if, if this fits the needs of what you're looking for, definitely go ahead and check it out. Uh, over here, all the stuff that I had used in the video, the watt meter, cabling, adapters, dummy load, my power pole breakout there. Uh, all that stuff, I'll put some links in the description below in case you're interested in any of that. Um, you can go and find it there. And uh, I will also put a link to the Bellphone website to this uh, specific radio. And uh, you can go on and look there and you can inquire and ask questions to, directly to the company if you have any. And uh, you know, if you're looking to buy it, I'm sure they can set you up and uh, get you figured out there. Uh, but other than that, I think that about covers it and this will go into the uh, Bellphone video playlist and I would continue to put any Bellphone radios I have into that playlist so you can see along the way what kind of different options and offerings that the company has. So at this point, I hope you guys really liked the video. Uh, click the like button if you did, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below if you have any other questions. Uh, about this radio that I might be able to answer or that Bellphone may be able to answer as well. So hit us up with those and uh, we'll keep moving forward. So thank you for taking the time to watch the video. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you on the next one.